This question of the day asks, what is the slope, so I'm looking for slope, of the line containing the points 2, 5 and negative 3, 3? So this time, once again, I've been asked to find slope, but notice they gave me something different than they've been giving me before. On all the examples we had done so far, we'd looked at when we were finding slope and we'd been given a graph. This time we've been given points. Well, to find slope when you've been given points, the easiest thing to do is to bust out the formula, the slope formula. And I've got great news for you. It's on the GED formula sheet, so you don't even have to have it memorized. Go ahead and take a look at your GED formula sheet. The bottom third of the page uh, shows you that slope formula. And what it says is this, M equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, um, a lot of mathematicians are so lazy that they don't even memorize the formula like this. They memorize the formula like um, to find slope. So M is just our fancy word for slope, okay? Got our fancy letter for slope. Um, for years, I didn't know why they called it M because, you know, slope starts with an S. I'm like, why do they call it M for slope? But it turns out it's from the French word, monter, and I am not French, so you'll have to excuse my accent. Um, but it's this idea, like, think of it like climbing a mountain. When you talk about slope, you're talking about how much you go up and over, up and over, or up and over, you're climbing. Okay, so... The idea here is when I talk about y2 minus y1, well, remember your y values, that's how much you're going up and down. So if I take my second y value and I subtract out my first y value, this is just how much my y's changed. Oftentimes, mathematicians will call this the change in y. Uh, and hello, we've been talking about change, that change in y, that's our rise. And then if you look here, x2, the second x, minus x1, the first x. That's right there, our change in x's, our run. And so we can see, even though the formula looks a little different, this is still that rise over run concept we've been talking about, okay? So let's go ahead and plug into this formula. And I'm just going to um, erase my uh, information here so I have a little bit of space to work. Okay, so... What I'm going to do here is remember that when you look at a point right here, when this is a point, the point 2, 5, the first one is always its x value, and the second one is the y value. And then same thing here. This is an x value, and this is a y value. So uh, here for my slope formula, I'm saying take the second y and subtract the first y. So let's call this guy point 2. So this will be my second x, my second y, and we'll call this guy point 1. And now it's easy to plug into this formula. I'll take the second y. Here's the second y, the y from the second point. That's 3. And I'll subtract out uh, the first y, the first y, so the y from the first point. That's 5. And I'm going to put that over. I'm going to take the second x. That's negative 3. Negative 3. This is the second x. And from that, I'm going to subtract the first x, the x from point 1. And that's 2. And now it's just a matter of simplifying my math here. So 3 minus 5 is negative 2. And if you were had this on the actual GED, you would have the calculator. So if you struggle with 3 minus 5 um, on this particular problem, you would be able to use a calculator. And negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. And now I'm almost done, but remember that all final fraction answers should be simplified. So simplifying includes reducing, but it also includes simplifying signs. And a negative divided by a negative, because remember, a fraction bar means the same as divide, so negative over a negative cancels and turns into a positive. So my slope here is 2 fifths. This particular fraction won't reduce, and so I'm done.